So on December 7th, we got uh, 15, 16 um, black Coternix quail eggs from Southwest Game Birds and 15, 16 Jumbo Sparkle Fee Coternix from Southwest Game Birds. Uh, it's one of the last uh, batch of eggs that they were sending out. They no longer do eggs. They only sell live birds. So we were very lucky to get uh, some eggs from them. And that was December 7th. We put the eggs upside down, I guess, with the tips, the pointed eggs, pointed part of the eggs, upside down, let the eggs get uh, room temperature. And then on the 8th, we put them, 8th or 9th, we put them in the incubator and set it for 99.5 degrees, about 40% humidity. And about 45 minutes ago, today's the 26th, and about 45 minutes ago, we started getting some hatchlings. So, so far we've got two black quail and two sparkle fee that have hatched. And you can see here in the forefront, we've got another black quail that is got its wings out of the eggshell, but it's not completely broke free. <clears throat> um, around when the incubator said that there was nine days left, we increased the humidity up to 70, it's at 75 percent right now, and we bumped it up to 100 degrees because we have a Nurture Right 360, and I've heard a lot of people talk about the temperature not being 100% accurate. So, this is about our fifth, fourth or fifth hatching um, with this incubator. We, on average, end up with about a 60% hatch rate. Um, we put in some, uh, button quail a few weeks ago. Well, probably about, no, that's got to be at least a month, month and a half now. Uh, time flies around the holidays. So we put in like 39 button quail and we had, I think, 36 of the button quail hatch. And so everything else has been, the other three hatches, three, four hatches have been, around 65 70 percent hatch rate and so um, only problem that we have is this uh, incubator um, I guess if I ever had to give a review is the accuracy of the temperature I have not tested it myself so I'm just going off of what other people have said when they tested it but I can say for sure that the humidity it's kind of difficult to keep keep this where it should be. Um, hatching time, they have a larger incubator, a bit more expensive than this one, um, holds a lot more, and sorry if I'm yawning, I'm very tired. It's going on 1 a.m. here. Um, Everybody that I've talked to said that they love that one. Um, it's easier to control the humidity. Um, this one here with the Nurture Right 360, it's very difficult to keep the humidity where you want it to be. You, you constantly have to be checking it. And you can see the two little reservoirs here in the front and the bottom of the video. Um, you just got to keep filling those two, three times a day. In order to keep the humidity right and then there's a little valve up at the top that you can slide open a little door um, got to constantly be moving that it's definitely not an incubator um, that you can just put the eggs in and forget about it if, if, if you don't have the time you don't have uh, some kids to help keep an eye on it um, it's probably not the best incubator especially for beginners um, even myself I'm a beginner so that's probably why my hatch rates not higher um, I'm in a lot of different forums and I follow a lot of people like Coternix Corner 
uh, my Shire Farms, uh, and a few others. And uh, uh, everybody that has reviewed this uh, incubator has kind of said the same thing, that it's, it's not the best incubator for uh, a new new person raising quail but uh it, it's done okay i put i've put so many eggs in this we we max it out i put uh probably 40 eggs each time in this and that's that's probably about as many eggs as you can put in this you might be able to squeeze in a few more but uh i put about 40 30 to 40 eggs each time and uh we get at least a I'd say at least no less than 60% hatch rate every time that we've we've hatched and this is like I think our fourth or fifth hatching now so I was really hoping I'm hoping for a high hatch rate on this one because I cannot get any more eggs from uh, Southwest game birds they're not selling them anymore but there are some other they they recommended a few other um, quail farmers out there that uh, oh, I feel bad this little guy's in there chirping his little heart away trying to get out of there he's done so well so far he's he's getting out oh there in the right I don't know if you saw that right over there uh, one is peeping out right now just poked out enough to break his shell there you go wow he's not playing around Jeez, he just pipped it and just pushed himself right out of there. That guy or gal has said that they have had enough of being in that shell. Maybe he can help the other one figure it out. <clears throat> That's the fastest I've ever seen one... Uh, out of the shell there. Apologize for the glare on my ceiling fan there. It is going on one o'clock. I am getting tired. But I wanted to go live and uh, get this put out on our YouTube channel. We haven't had any live hatchings on the YouTube yet. And I thought about going live, but uh, this is just a recording. Maybe next time when I... Uh, I've got another 70 eggs that i got to put in here uh, from our own quail. And... Uh, Maybe we'll go live with that next hatching when that happens. This guy said, you know what? I pushed out, but I am tired. I'm going back to sleep. I don't know if you can hear the chirping in the background, but that is... Coming from Hey Hey, we have a house chicken. She is the last of our buff laced Polish chickens. I ordered five from uh, mypackchicken.com and they sent us uh, five chicks in August. And as they started growing, we noticed they didn't have the little poofs on the top of their head. So I took pictures, contacted customer service. They said, those are not buff laced Polish. We do not know what we sent you. So we kept those. They're out in the garden now. They're outside in their chicken coop. And then uh, they replaced them. And in September, they sent us five buff laced Polish. Three died in the snow. Uh, one got taken away by a hawk. So we have one left. And um, for whatever reason, don't know what happened with her. She just became very lethargic. Wasn't moving, couldn't pick up her head. I had to get uh, some electrolytes and um, put it in a syringe and fed her. Um, I gave her her water and nursed her back to health. Brought her back inside the house and put her in the brooder. And, you know, she got to the point where she could scoot around on her side. 
and really couldn't stand or sit up. But then, you know, constantly giving her liquids with the electrolytes. Um, you can see her on our Facebook page, um, on our TikTok, and I believe on our YouTube. She may be on there as well. And uh, now she's back to full health. But uh, just to be safe, keeping her inside the house. And uh, I'm going to have to build some kind of a cage or a coop or something for in the house. And uh, we'll keep her in because it's, it's too late to really put her outside in the cold. The temps here in Ohio are, are a little bit colder and it would be tough for her to adjust. And so she will stay inside until spring. And then we will put her back outside with the rest of the chickens. And um, Hey Hey will be one of the, the families out there. Oh, there he goes. Okay. So now you can see that other chick there, right over, right over here, has finally gotten out of its egg. Well, at least it looks like it. Might still be in there. Now let me turn the other light on and see if we can see these better. All right, well, we've got eight. We only had four just a uh, half hour ago or so. Nope, now we're up to eight, I believe. Yes, yeah, so we've got eight in here, so. Some more hatched back there in the back that I didn't see at first. Well, this one's got its head stuck in there, still trying to get out. That one's definitely got more black than the others. What we have, what you're seeing are one of the last shipments of quail chicks from Southwest Game Bird. Um, Coternix Corner. Um, on Halloween they were having a contest and if you just put your name in the chat they randomly selected some winners and we were the winners of 30 quail eggs from southwest game birds and they sent out an email asked us what we wanted if there's anything in particular and i've wanted to get some black quail um and they just happened to have those and i thought they looked really cool so I told them I wanted some black quail, but they also had something called Jumbo Sparkly Fee. And so I mentioned those two, and they said, sure. So they sent us 15 to 18 um, of each. And we got them on December 7th. Um, let them acclimate, put the tips of the eggs pointed down once we got them and uh, so on December 8th or 9th we put these chicks in the incubator and probably around 11 o'clock tonight um, came in here and saw three that were out now we're up to eight I've got some movement and quite a few other eggs in here and <laughs> this one is just he cannot seem to get his head out of that shell. The rest of his body's out, but just can't seem to get his head out. We're at 78% uh, humidity, so should really have softened up the shells for him. And I'm hoping for a decent hatch rate.
with this incubator we get, like I said, we've been getting 65% on average. So we will see what we get here. And we'll keep them in the incubator for 24 to 48 hours. And then uh, we will grab them out as fast as we can and close the lid back so that way we can give all the other eggs a chance to hatch. Looks like I've got another one over here that's already peeped. But uh, just a little bit of a hole. And that one black one, he's still pushing that eggshell around on top of his head. He hasn't gotten all the way out yet. But we'll keep them in the incubator for the 24 to 48 hours. For those of you that have not raised quail or had an eggs to incubate, um, you want to keep them in there definitely to let them dry out but also to give all the other eggs a chance to hatch. Um, as soon as you lift the lid, the humidity and the temperature drops. And I don't know the, the terms, the terminology um, with some of this stuff yet, because we're still learning ourselves. We did not start raising quail until September of 2023. So I went to the fair, to local fair, in Lake County to get a Angora rabbit for my daughter. She had a rabbit that we rescued uh, from one of the local animal shelters and we got it as a rescue. And it was an older rabbit and we knew that it wasn't gonna live too long. She did pretty well, but uh, when she passed away, I promised my daughter that I would get her a new rabbit. Well, I wanted to get an Angora rabbit so that way I could teach her a little bit of the business of um, you know, caring for a rabbit and then brushing and then we were going to sell the, the fur. Well, they didn't have any, so I'd been looking at quail for a while. We used to raise sheep and uh, we had 70, 80 sheep at one point in time. And we got out of sheep a few years ago and um, I thought about quail for a little bit. We thought about chickens for in the garden and... Um, just something was interesting about quail. Used to hunt them when I was a kid, but never farm raised. And so it just so happened at the same barn where they had the rabbits, there was one person that had quail. So I started asking some more questions. And instead of getting a rabbit, I left the fair with six regular Coternix quail. And they had all won the prize and stuff like that, but uh, and some ribbons. And, uh, it was, they were pretty cool. Brought them home. And next thing I knew, I was buying 60 quail from another quail farmer and bought another 60, bought another 60 and just kept buying. And, uh, now I raise quail. So at one time we had regular coturnix, jumbo white coturnix. And button quail. Now we have regular coturnix, jumbo white coturnix, and now we have black coturnix and jumbo sparkle fee coturnix. So we got out of reason the, the button quail because it really had no use for them. It was just kind of like a little novelty thing. I got some eggs off of um, Etsy. Wanted to see if I could hatch them and had like a 90, 95% hatch rate. And then the next question was, what am I going to do with all these button quail? So luckily I found people that uh, locally here in Ohio that were looking for button quail and sold all of them. So now we're just going to stick with uh, larger size quail here. But anyways, it is late. I'm very tired. Thank you for watching the video. I'm going to let this record for a little bit longer. 
we'll go to 30 minutes and then uh, I'll shut this off and maybe I'll go live for just a little bit I haven't done a live on YouTube before but uh, we'll have this video here and you guys got to see one pip and then just kick his way out so that was kind of cool I hope that you guys will subscribe follow and share this YouTube channel and so we can grow and continue to share videos of the farm and raising quail everything that we're learning as we go you can learn with us and uh, again we thank you for for watching hope you share subscribe and we will talk to you again soon